Okay, so we're going to hit a couple of important concepts in this video. I built a sample high poly mesh in Fusion to demonstrate a couple of things here. So there's the high poly, and here is the low poly. Very, very simple. It's just a cylinder. Let me hide the high poly. And in the UVs, I just did totally normal layout or, or unfold and layout, and so this is what we got. And, and these were a little bit closer in, but I kind of got them out of the way because I may want to do some work uh, in Photoshop to this to demonstrate something, or I may need to grab another piece of geo. But either way, this is going to be effective. I'm going to make sure that's just or oriented horizontally. So I've already got this exported here into Substance Painter. And I'm going to go to Bake Mesh Maps. We'll set this to 2048 and go and grab that high poly. We're going to go ahead and leave all of these settings the same, anti-aliasing 2x2. Two two. We've only got two pieces of geo, so the match doesn't really matter, and everything else is fine. We'll go ahead and hit Bake Selected Textures. So what we can see is there's some very strange stuff happening up here. And what's going on there is the high poly and the low poly are different enough that the low poly, when it's doing its baking, is not actually seeing down into these recessed areas of the high poly. So the way that I fix that is in the bake mesh maps, there's this max frontal distance and max rear distance. So what happens when we're baking is Painter will effectively duplicate your low poly geometry and then just expand it out. And it expands it out this value. And that's how it looks down and that's how far it looks up. So like if it sees the high poly within this range, then it'll bake to it, which is why we got these. But if the high poly is different enough from the low poly that we're outside of this range, it just doesn't see it and you get this kind of result. So this is actually going backwards because this would be up and that's down. So we need to actually increase our max rear distance. So I usually start with something like 0.1 because uh, you don't want to go too far because then you can begin seeing stuff that you don't actually want to see. And you can see now with this, we're starting to get more of that, but we're still missing what looks like some, some areas in here. So I'll let this finish baking. And you can see it's starting to seal into that space, but we're still, we're not getting all the way down. So 0.1 is, is not enough. Uh, so let's just increase this to 0.2. And we don't need to do anything with max frontal because there isn't any part of the high poly that's above the low poly. If there was, we would need to modify that value as well. So here we can see we're getting all the way down inside those recessed areas. So if there's ever a part of your high poly that's being clipped, these are the two values that you're gonna to wanna to increase. And like step them up, don't just go all, unless the bakes are taking forever and then I don't know, make an educated guess, but uh, you can also reduce your your output size and you can turn off the uh, the anti-aliasing to speed up your bakes if, if you're just doing some test bakes. But so anyway, that's, uh, that's how you fix that problem. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is these bakes look super weird, right? Like, why is this? This one looks okay. That's what we're sort of expecting, but all of these on the edge here are all at this crazy angle. And the reason for that has to do with our edge smoothing here on the low poly. So what Painter is doing effectively is this is our, this is our low poly. With the edges smoothed, all Painter does is it just duplicates the low poly mesh and it just expands it out just like this. So when it's looking at the high poly, what it does is it says, okay, well, here's my expanded vert and here's my original vert and it just lines them up and then it looks down at the high poly. So in Painter, the effect that we get is the view of the high poly from those two verts, right? So that's why we're getting this sort of angled approach to, to this bake. Now up here, the, the geo is just getting pushed straight up. So there's no distortion there. Now what happens when we harden the texture borders, let me go ahead and show you with the, the polyverts on. So I'm gonna to go to display, polygons, uh, vertex normals. So this is with everything smooth. And you can see we're just like basically averaging this direction and this direction, and that's kind of what we get. So that's the, that's the direction that the, uh, the, the high poly is being looked at. So what I wanna do is I wanna look straight down at it for these faces, and I wanna look perpendicularly at it from these faces relative to the top. So I'm gonna to need to go to my UVs, go to the edges, we'll select all the edges, go to select texture borders. You can see it grabs those texture borders. And then we can just go to mesh display 
and harden edge. And you can see what happens with the vertex normals. All of these faces are now going to be looked at from this direction, and all of these faces are going to be looked at from this direction. So let's go ahead and export this and do another bake and look at the result. So I basically just overwrote that same file. So there's our current situation. Go to project configuration, grab the new low poly, and I need to do a new bake. Everything is the same here. We're keeping all the same settings. All right, so a little better maybe, but not exactly what we're looking for. I think there's one setting that I'm gonna to need to modify, which is average normal. So in this case, I'm just gonna turn average normals off. We'll do a new, another bake here. Here we are. Right, so if you harden your edges and you average normals, now one thing that you can get a little bit of, a, of an issue here is you can get that little, that little um, artifact, which is not really ideal. Probably the best of both worlds would be like a little bit of a fillet on this edge to, to help with that transformation. That 90 degrees is, is pretty uh, pretty intense. So let's go ahead and just do that very quickly. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pause the video and add that in real quick. All right, so there's that extra edge. It's, it's inside the shell, right? So if I go to my UVs, you can see I can still harden this edge, but keep that edge a little bit softer. So that's kind of what it looks like. There's an edge here as well that's that's visible because we've hardened those edges. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to want to grab that edge and soften it. Like the the vertical edge on a cylinder should usually not be hardened, but it doesn't matter. We're not really we don't get a different result when we soften that edge because of it's it's on one shell. That's when you're sort of communicating between different two different shells that you get that issue. So we've got some stuff over here. We'll go to edit, delete by type history. We'll do another export on this file export selection. I'm going to go ahead and use a new low poly head over to painter, edit project configuration. I'll hit okay. And over here, I'm actually going to turn this off and see if we get a, a better result on that edge. All right. So it looks like I, there's probably just some little issue with my UVs that I didn't I didn't correct for that little hiccup right there. Uh, but everything else here looks great. So that's kind of the best of both worlds. So we added a little bit of a transitional edge there to support what's going on there. We hardened our UV shell so that we're we're looking down at the, this uh, this these collection of faces from this side and then everything else is being looked at kind of perpendicularly. Now this is something that I was kind of hoping would be apparent. You can kind of see it. You can really see it if I if I come down here. We noticed it a little bit on the knife. This like angly swoopy thing, that's called scalloping. And it's actually super easy to fix in Photoshop and I will show you that in the next video. You can actually see it here as well. That's a little bit a little bit simpler. So anyway, the solution is the same no matter where it is on that cylinder.